I'm pleased for the gospel according to John. Uh, the gospel according to John. We're going to begin this morning at chapter 16. I want to read just a few verses there and then we'll begin our talk for this morning. While you are turning there, let's pause and welcome those who are joining us by way of delayed television. This is the Bethel Baptist Church. We're located in the Collegeville community of the city of Birmingham. The address is 3200 28th Avenue North. The phone number is 205-322-5360. For those of you who like to join us on the web, the web address www.bethelcollegeville.org. This is our normal Sunday morning 10 o'clock a.m. worship service. We're here every Sunday morning 10 o'clock for worship service and then at 9 excuse me, at 8.30 for, sun, for Sunday school. If you have a chance, you can come on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're here at 12 noon for our noonday Bible study, and then again at 7 for our evening Bible study. Bethel Baptist Church, 3200 28th Avenue North. Today, we're studying from the book of John, the Gospel of John. I want to begin at verse number 7. Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verse number 7. Have you scrolled there or turned there or tapped a page through there or whatever, however you get there? Are you there? Yeah. Amen. All right, let's begin at verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. You may be seated. I want to continue today talking about the work of the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Last week, as we talked, I talked to you a little bit about how Jesus introduced him to us, uh, and he's introduced to us in several different ways. Uh, primarily, Jesus said he is one of the same nature as I am, but he is different. He's different, but the same nature. He comes for the same purpose and for the same reason. He's going to abide with you forever, Jesus told us. Uh, he is uh, one that is going to bear witness of the truth. He is exclusion, exclusive to the believer. Uh, the world cannot receive him. He is sent by the Father. He is the one that's going to teach and confirm. He is going to warn and convict. Uh, and so we've talked about the introduction to the Holy Spirit. Now I want to go a little bit deeper. John chapter 16, verse 8, Jesus tells us that when the Holy Spirit is come, he is going to rebuke. He is going to convince. He is going to reprove. He is going to admonish. He is going to let you know in some unmistakable way, three things. He's going to let you know of sin. Now, the sin that Jesus emphasizes here is the sin that sends people to hell. Remember John chapter 3, Jesus said to us that, that this is the condemnation this is the thing that causes people to be condemned because they didn't believe on me. It wasn't that you're an adulterer. It wasn't that you're a drunkard. It wasn't that you're a liar. It wasn't that you're a whoremonger. It wasn't that you are a backstabber. It wasn't that you're a good old nasty church member. It, it was that you didn't believe. That's why you're condemned. And the Holy Spirit is going to say, this is why you're going there. All the other stuff we could have dealt with. If you had just come to me and confessed your sins and acknowledged me as your Savior, we could have dealt with all that other stuff. Amen. But this is the reason. 
God has sent me into the world to be the salvation of the world so that when you stand before God, and if God were to ask you that mythical uh, evangelism explosion uh, question, why should I let you into heaven? You can say, because I've accepted Jesus as my righteousness. But he says, Holy Spirit is going to convince you, going to convict you. This is why judgment is passed upon you, because you didn't believe. Second thing, he says, the Holy Spirit is going to convince you or to convict you of the fact that I am righteous. How do you know I'm righteous? Because I came from God and I went back to God. If I were unrighteous, I would be left in the grave. I would be like every other man. But because I'm going back to my Father, my Holy Spirit is going to convince you and going to convict you that, that, that I am righteous. That I am the righteousness of God, incarnate. And so the Holy Spirit then is always trying to bring us to the point where we understand the righteousness of Christ. And if we can ever get to the point where we understand the righteousness of Christ as opposed to us trying to be good enough, you'll, you'll be able to do wondrous in this life. If you can understand, it's not because of you, it's because of Him. Is his right standing with God. We come to him through the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus and the cross of Calvary that gives us all a right to the tree of life. It, it is what makes us pure and right in the sight of God. And then he said that the Holy Spirit will convince you or convict you or convince you of judgment because the devil has been judged. And everything that he has stolen from Adam God has gotten back to the person of Jesus Christ. And if, and, and if the Holy Spirit can convince you of those three things, that Jesus is righteous, that there's sin in all of us, but, 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 but God holds Jesus responsible or held him responsible for the sins of mankind. If you can get that, if you can get the fact that he is righteous by himself apart from our own goodness, if you can get the fact that the prince of this world has already been judged, that everything could ever do has already been dealt with, if you can get those things, things by the Holy Spirit, you'll be unstoppable. And the rest of our lives, that's what the Holy Spirit is going to spend his time doing. Trying to help us to understand it's not that you're good enough. Satan has already been dealt with. Demons have already been dealt with. Sicknesses have already been dealt with. All the perversions that may come upon your life have already been dealt with. All of the things, the, the, the family curses and all that mess has already been nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. And again, if the Holy Spirit can just get that inside of you, He can do anything with you. Today I want to deal with four things. Those are just three. That, that, that's just extra. Uh, the four things I want to deal with, deal with the work of the Holy Spirit. There are four things I want to deal with. I want to begin, though, by all of us looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse number 2. We're going to use our Bibles today. Uh, hopefully you have one, and uh, hopefully you are fairly familiar with it. If not, just use your table of contents a lot. Uh, we'll get there. Again, we, there's, there's no shame in here. There's no shame at all. We want to look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. I'm going to begin with how the Holy Spirit was first introduced to us in Scripture. Sometimes, when you're interpreting Bible, you look at, as you know, the first use and the most frequent use. If you look at the first use, it will give you an indication as to how God is going to use that or how he's going to be signified throughout the Scripture. So, we'll begin today at the first mention of the Holy Spirit. Are we there? Genesis chapter 1. Hopefully, you can find Genesis. Uh, if not, that's okay. Use your table of contents. Find Genesis there. Did y'all see the glory just come on me? Okay. Genesis chapter 1. That's, that's God's anointing. That's what that is. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. I, I like the kid for, for those of you who are new here. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
The purpose of the Spirit of God, the ministry of the Spirit of God, first of all, is to germinate by preparation. Now, what does that mean? To germinate means to start something, to get it developed. And what the Holy Spirit's job to do uh, is, in our lives, is to get us ready for the voice of God. Notice he was hovering. That, the, 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 the literal word means to brood as a hen was set upon eggs, getting it ready for the time when it is to be hatched. It means to flutter over, to, to protect, just waiting for the appropriate time when something is going to happen. And the Holy Spirit's job in our lives, his first use, his first priority, is to get us ready for the speaking of God. Whenever God gets ready to say something, he has to get us prepared. Whenever God is going to move, he has to get us prepared. Most of us got saved because the Holy Spirit used a series of events to get us ready and we went to a place or somebody came to us and shared the gospel with us or we heard a song or we heard something on radio or we saw something on TV and because the Holy Spirit had prepared our hearts when the voice of God came we were ready to, to receive Christ. And so in all of our lives one of the things that the Holy Spirit is going to be doing is preparing us for the next voice of God, preparing us for the next move of God. And it is important that we understand that unless the Holy Spirit makes the preparation, no matter how much you witness, people don't see it. Amen. They don't see it. Amen. The Holy Spirit has to open their hearts. The Holy Spirit has to prepare their hearts. The Holy Spirit has to get us to the point where we are ready to receive what God is about to say. And as the Holy Spirit is hovering over the face of the earth, right now he is just waiting for God to say something. Just waiting for God to say something. But unless he is there, even if God says it, we miss it. It is the Holy Spirit that prepares the environment for God to move. Nothing eternal happens unless the Holy Spirit is there preparing the heart. So whenever you pray, if you're a pastor and you're listening to me now, the thing you need to pray is not only that you might be able to minister the Word of God, but pray that the hearts of the people will be prepared, be prepared to hear. Because you can preach yourself blind. You can sweat until you dehydrate yourself. You can entertain, you can say a song, I mean sing a song, and even do a poem. But if their hearts are not prepared, you wear yourself out. But then again, if their hearts are prepared, they may all get saved with just the choir singing. Because the Holy Spirit has done his work and prepared an environment for God to use. And so even as you go out every day, pray, God, prepare my heart for what you want to do today. God, prepare my heart for what you want to do to me and through me today. God, prepare my heart for those that you want to minister to today through me. God, prepare me for talking with my spouse or talking with my children or talking with whomever I have to talk with. Because I understand that you have to prepare my heart as well as theirs. The book of Proverbs says, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. God has to prepare hearts but God also has to speak. John chapter 6 verse 63 Jesus tells his disciples it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh he says profits nothing. It is the spirit that makes alive. It is a spirit that brings to life. One word from God on a heart that is prepared makes all the difference in the world. So the Holy Spirit then is in the business of preparing our hearts. Acts chapter 10, I'm using a lot of scripture, verse 19. When Peter thought on the vision that the Holy Spirit has given him, behold, the Holy Spirit said, behold, three men are seeking you. When Cornelius sent to him, it was the Holy Spirit who prepared his heart to receive the Gentiles. Were it not for the work of the Holy Spirit, 
Peter still would have been a religious bigot in that Gentiles should not receive anything of God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit prepares his heart. He prepares our heart in worship. He prepares our heart for prayer. He prepares our heart for service. He prepares us for the future. He teaches us what's going on in our lives. He prepares our heart to minister. He prepares our heart to receive ministry. It is the work of the Holy Spirit, number one, to prepare us. He is the one that germinates the preparation for the work of God to take place. Nothing eternal is accomplished apart from the work of God the Holy Spirit. Let's turn now to Ephesians chapter 3 and I want to look at verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, it is in the New Testament for those of you who are wondering. Uh, if you find Colossians and Philippians they're all right in there together. Uh, an easy way to remember it is General Electric Power Company. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And GE, if you're listening, you can send me some money for the free advertisement. <laughs> Ephesians chapter uh, 3, I want to look at verse 16. The second work of the Holy Spirit is not only to uh, germinate by preparation, but to help you grow by perfecting or perfection His work. Secondly, once the heart has been prepared, once God has spoken, is to grow us up. I know that's not the right way to state it, but that's what I mean. To grow us up. To get us to the point where we are not children. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Let's begin at verse 16. Are we there? Amen. That, you, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. How? By what? His spirit in the inner man. His spirit. And this is what his spirit wants to do. His spirit wants to dwell in your heart by faith so that you become rooted and grounded in love. Not puppy love, not I love you as long as everything is going right, but the kind of love that endures all things, bears all things, hopes all things, believeth all things, that never fails, that does not exalt itself, that does not rejoice when things go in wrong, but rejoice in the truth. That kind of love. Let's continue. Verse 18. And that once you become rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to understand as is with the case, or should be the case, with all the saints, what is the depth, excuse me, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of the love of God. And again, to know the love of God, which passes all understanding, so that when you come to that point, you might be filled with all the fullness of God. We read this morning, just a few minutes ago, Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13, I have a lot of things I need to say to you, but you can't deal with them now. How be it, when the Holy Spirit has come, he's going to begin to tell you some things that you couldn't take from me. Because the Holy Spirit working in our lives wants to bring us to the point where our character is mature. Where our character is mature. Everything he does is to bring us to the point where we are unrebukable in the sight of Christ. That's his job, to try to get us to the point where we are mature in Christ. Not any more babies, but mature enough to be able to handle strong meat, to be able to handle rebuke, to be able to handle when somebody corrects you and not get mad and run off and leave the church. Amen. 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 And not get mad Amen. when somebody corrects you. And run off and leave the church. Because that's being childish. That's being very childish. The Holy Spirit's job is to help us grow up. 
Why does he want to help us grow up so we can be more useful to Christ? So we can be more useful in the kingdom? When you look at Galatians, excuse me, not Galatians. Yeah, it is Galatians. When we deal with the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. Let's turn there. You're in Ephesians. Just turn to the left in your Bibles and you'll be in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 as we look at verses 22 through 25. We're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. So he not only germinates the preparation in our heart, he gets us ready for what God is going to speak to us, but then he begins the process of uh, growing us up to perfection. Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verses 22 through 25. Are we there? Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit, now most of the time in your Bible, is going to be capitalized as in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, my contention is that it is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit because he's not comparing the Holy Spirit with you. He's comparing your old nature with your new nature. He's comparing your flesh with your spirit. Now this is the work that the Holy Spirit produces in your new nature. And so he says, or I believe he's saying, the fruit of the human spirit as acted upon by the Holy Spirit is love. We just talked about the Holy Spirit producing love. So that's why another reason why I believe that. But it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified what? The flesh. So these things do not come naturally out of the flesh. They come out of the new spirit man. Have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. So the Holy Spirit's job, secondly, is to get us to the point or bring us to the point continually of spiritual maturity. If you've ever read the book of Revelation, one of the things you'll see constantly to the first three chapters is this phrase. He that hath an ear, let him what? Hear. Let him hear what? Hear. What the Spirit, what the Spirit is saying to the church. Well, why is the Spirit even talking to the church? Literally, these are, these are seven church ages. They were literal churches, but they were seven church ages as well. And to every church age, the Spirit is talking. And He's talking because He's trying to get us mature because He knows there's coming a day when Jesus is going to return and He's going to look at the fruit. He's going to look at the fruit. And his job is to get us ready for inspection. His job is to get us ready for inspection. That's why there's sometimes that God will allow you to go through some things, not until you change your mind, but until your heart is changed about certain things. Amen. What does the Bible say? A light affliction is but for a moment. But they work in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at what's seen, what, but what's unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, things which are not seen are eternal. The Holy Spirit is trying to get us to the point where we are mature in Christ. Yes, yeah. To perfect us. That's his job. Not just to give you goosebumps. You may get goosebumps uh, with, with some of the work of the Holy Spirit. But the idea is to get you ready. To get you ready. 1 Corinthians. You don't have to look there. I'll just read it to you. Yeah, let's look there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you're in your Bible in Galatians, turn to the left. And uh, you should go right into 2 Corinthians. If you keep turning left, you'll go right into 1 Corinthians. Pastor, why do you always do that? Why do you always tell us how to get there? Because there's somebody listening to me by way of television that may not be as familiar with their Bibles as you. And so I want them to be able to go with us. That's why I do that. Not trying to insult your intelligence. I know you know how to get there. I could probably just blindfold you and you could turn in your Bible and find it just by the way it feels. Right. But there may be someone who is listening. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's begin at verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let's begin at verse number 9. We're talking about the fact that the second ministry of the Holy Spirit is to bring us to the point of maturity. 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, let's begin in verse 9, are we there? But, as it is written, I had not seen, nor ye heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. I added the even. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given us to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now again, the whole point is that the Holy Spirit was given to us so that we may know what God has given to us. And once we know that, he is to teach us how to use it. How to work. How to work patience. How to work long-suffering. How to work meekness. How to work temperance and self-control. How to work all these things in our lives and still come out ahead because without his guidance there's no way we know how to put those things to work in our lives and still come out ahead this world will not teach you how to be meek and still come out ahead this world cannot teach you how to be patient and still come out ahead this world cannot teach you how not to worry and still come out ahead. They can't teach you how to give and still have more than you gave. This Holy Spirit, this, this world cannot teach you what Jesus said. If you want to be greatest, be the servant of all. The world can't teach you that. The Holy Spirit has to teach you that. And the only way you're going to learn that is by listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying and allow him to guide and to lead and to direct your life and when you get into those adverse situations be obedient to whatever he's telling you to do. So the Holy Spirit germinates by preparation. He, uh, secondly, he grows by uh, perfection, grows by perfection. Third of all, he guards by perception. What do I mean by that? Perception is the ability to discern between what is good and what is evil. What is God and what is not of God. Jesus tells us in John chapter 10 verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and they know it. The voice of a stranger they'll not follow. First John chapter 4 verse 1, beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. There's some things in this life that even if you don't have the scripture on it as the Holy Spirit works in your life you ought to be able to discern. You ought to be able to discern. Even if you don't know scripture and verse there ought to be some things, if you're walking with the Holy Spirit, you just discern. You just know. Same thing with some people. That there ought to be some people, if even, I'm not talking about suspicion now. Okay, there's some people just suspicious of everybody. I'm not talking about that. But, but there, are, there ought to be a time that even if you can't put your finger on it, there ought to be something down inside of you giving you some instruction, keeping you out of something that you would ordinarily go into because the Holy Spirit is trying to guard you by giving you a supernatural perception that you can't pick up in your mind. That's going to be important as we go closer and closer to the return of the Lord Jesus because Jesus said there's going to be come a time there's going to come a time in life when there's going to be such a delusion such uh, such persuasive antichrist that if it were possible they would deceive 
even the very elect, the people that were chosen and sealed for that time in life. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit, one of his ways of guarding you is by giving you discernment. Remember the time Paul was preaching in the book of Acts? He was going by a river and there was a woman following him and kept testifying, these are men from the Most High God. They have come here to show us the way of life. Do you remember that? Some of you do, some of you don't. It's in there. Okay. Uh, Paul, the Bible says, turned around and rebuked the Spirit. Now most preachers, when, if, if somebody follows them and announces them like that, we just love every minute of it. Amen. Just love every minute. That, that God sent somebody to announce me. When I walk in, everybody knows me, and somebody's just announcing me. But, but they don't know that sometimes everything that looks good may not be God. Amen. Everything in church may not be God. Everything that comes out of pulpit may not be God. And so the Holy Spirit's job is to guard you by giving you a discernment to know the voice of your Father, to know the voice of Jesus, so that wherever you're going, whatever you're into, even if it looks right, smells right, tastes right, and everything else, if it's not right, there is a discernment that pops up in you and say, no, I think I'm going to pass on that. I don't think I'll go this time. I don't think I'll get in the car with you this time. You don't know what they're getting ready to do. You don't know what's ahead, but the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. And so his job is to guard you, to keep you, to seal you, so that as you walk before the Lord, you walk in the way that is pleasing to the Lord, and you don't end up in stuff you have no business being in at all. Don't neglect the inward witness of the Spirit. Make sure you try the Spirit. Again, many things look right. They smell right. They taste right. It may be with another believer. And here's the, the part that gets a lot of people. And it may not be sin. Just because you're a believer and she's a believer does not necessarily mean you should get married. It doesn't. Because God may be calling one to be an evangelist and God may be calling the other to be a pastor and if an evangelist master marries a pastor the evangelist is going to be gone all the time and the pastor is going to want you to stay home all the time and there's going to be a problem both of you are trying to serve God but, but you just shouldn't have been together and you think just because we're both Christians we should just hook up no you should not I'm sorry that hook, hook up is another that's, <laughs> somebody told me what that means it's, it's not getting married See, my vernacular is getting married y'all's vernacular it means something else but that doesn't mean you should get married just because you're both Christians doesn't mean you should enter in a business together. Because even Christians have different temperaments of business. Some people, like me, have a lot, I have, I have a high risk tolerance. Doesn't bother me to, to, to make it, try something. The other people have a very low risk tolerance. And relationships can be torn apart because one has a high risk tolerance, the other has a low risk tolerance. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Because everything you do, he's doing is trying to guard you. Guard you from a mistake. He can teach you once you get out of it. He can teach you once you get in it. But it's a whole lot easier not getting in it. He's trying to guard you by perception. Paul, as he was going to, he's getting on a ship, Acts chapter 27. They wanted to sail. Paul said, I perceive, I'm adding this word, in my spirit, 
that this voyage is going to be with much hurt. I perceive that. I see that. The ability to discern by the Spirit what is the right way to go. That's why Romans chapter 8 talks about being led of the Spirit. Not led by the flesh. Because you can be led and you can be driven. You've got to be led. You've got to be led of the Spirit. That's how He guards you. Final point. Holy Spirit's job is to grace you by power. To grace you by power. To show God's favor upon you by giving you power to do what God has called you to do. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we read it this morning. You shall receive dunamis or uh, dunamis. Some people pronounce it that way. Dunamis. Uh, and the idea is strength, ability, force. We translate our word dynamite from it. You shall receive the dynamite that you need after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the dynamite you need to go and witness to the Sumerians that you don't like, that you have a prejudice against, that you think are half-breeds, that, and all the other things you don't like, I will give you first the physical ability, but I'll give you the spiritual ability to go and be a witness. And you need both. I'll give you the ability to do what I call you to do. I'll give you the power to live the life I've called you to live. I'll give you the power to do everything that I have ordained for you to do in my word, but it has to come by my power. Remember we read as we looked on Watch Night from the book of Zechariah, which says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. And the grace of God, the seal of God, the approval of God in your life is a power to perform the work of God. Not intellectual power, not emotional power, not political power, not social power, not monetary power. Spiritual power. The power of the Holy Spirit working in your life to do what God has called for all of us to do. Two last scriptures and then I'll close. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. With great power. I won't break my promise. Three scriptures. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness and in peace and in joy in the Holy Ghost. Last scripture. I'll try Micah, chapter number 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob by his transgression and to Israel his sin. Anytime you move, you want it to be by the Spirit's power. Anytime you speak, you want it to be by the Spirit's power. You want to speak to hearts that the Spirit has prepared. Trying to fuss it into them or trying to shame it into them is going to wear you out and them out. And so you pray. God prepare the hearts of the people to hear what you have to say. And one of the greatest things that I want in every service I preach is not only that they will hear what I say, but they will hear what you say sometimes about what I say. And sometimes I, I'm not even close to what you're talking to them about. Amen. But if you have the preeminence, if you have the ability, you can speak to hearts in a way I cannot speak to. I may be talking about fishing down on Tom Bigby River, but then you take that illustration and you take it to something that they did 20 years ago that they never confessed. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit's power. 
So his job, as we look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it is to germinate, to prepare by preparation. It is to grow us up by perfection. It is to guard us with perception. And then finally, it is to grace us with power. Let's pray.